So a few days ago, Rand Paul had to be escorted by cops to his hotel um, because he was surrounded by protesters. I believe this was after, it might have been after Donald Trump gave his, uh, his RNC speech. And um, he was out, he was in the streets of D.C., he was staying at a hotel, I guess, and he needed to be escorted by the cops because protesters were, I guess, loud and there were a bunch of them who were really close to him and they were being aggressive in terms of demands and what they were calling for. So I'm going to show you a little part of the video here. It's actually a much longer video, but credit to John Farina Photo, J-O-N-F-A-R-I-N-A Photo, at John Farina Photo on Twitter, and credit also to Jordan Chariton's uh, Status Coup YouTube channel, because this little clip that you're about to see here is from his, you know, longer video. But um, here's what happened, then we'll discuss. You're disgusting! You're disgusting! You can't even say her name because you're scared of your Republican friends. Come on, man, say her name. Say her name, right? Right, say her name. Say her name. Say her name, right? Come on, man. You got too many black people in your state. Come on, say her name. He's black. Oh, Julian. So when they said, say her name, say her name, they're trying to get Rand Paul to say Brianna Taylor's name. Um, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, you can go back and listen. I listened a few times. It sounds to me like the guy's not even getting Rand Paul's name right. I think they called him Ryan repeatedly. Anyway, um, yeah, it, you're barking up the wrong tree because Rand Paul is... One of the most, if not the most, pro-criminal justice reform um, senators in the country. But also, he proposed a bill called the Justice for Breonna Taylor Act. They're trying to get him to say Breonna Taylor's name. And he, he proposed the Justice for Breonna Taylor Act. And that bans no-knock warrants, which were the problem which led to the killing of Breonna Taylor. So the guy who's most on their side and most fighting for the exact change that they want is the one who's getting a bunch of crap. I mean, listen, my issue with it is just it's it's uneducated, it's ignorant. You don't know that this guy's actually your ally on this front. <laughs> like, if he wasn't, if you wanted to go after Rand for something that he's bad on, by all means. But you can't tell him... You can't try to prod him to do the right thing on something he's already doing the right thing on. That just, that makes no sense. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> so that, uh, that's the thing that's, that sucks about this, is that they're just wrong about where he stands on the issue. Like, this is an, a very specific issue where he's actually 100% in agreement with you. So, it, I, I don't know. I think it's very strange. Now, I will say beyond that... Um, I do think people overhype this too much as if, like, he was assaulted or something. I don't think he was assaulted. There was one moment where, where something with a bike happened, but I don't know. I couldn't tell exactly what it was. Somebody said, oh, they tried to throw a bike at Rand Paul. I don't know if I saw that, to tell you the truth. I really don't. Um, yes, it got a little hectic and it, it was a little loud and aggressive, sure. But I don't think, I don't think they broke any laws there. And actually, if you want to be serious about it, if you really want to get change, imagine all the politicians were had loud, aggressive protesters making them uncomfortable, not doing any physical violence. I'm against physical violence for sure. But if you make politicians uncomfortable and you do it about specific issues and it happens repeatedly, 
they are going to think twice before they do that bad thing again. So imagine politicians were mobbed by people like this. Again, no physical violence, but something like this because of the vote for the Iraq war and the Afghanistan war and, and people were on them like, you better in the wars. You better in the wars. You better in the wars now. You better in the wars. You know how many people died? You know, you got blood on your hands. You know that, right? So in terms of the actual tactic of what's going on here, as long as there's no physical violence, as long as there's no crossing of that clear line, then I actually really like the tactic of like, make politicians feel uncomfortable. If all it takes to bring about real change is making politicians feel uncomfortable, then of course I'm pro them feeling uncomfortable. Again, the only issue I have with this is they're just wrong on the facts in that they don't know that this is a guy who's probably, if not their closest ally, one of their closest allies when it comes to criminal justice reform, when it comes to ending the racist drug war, when it comes to literally the Justice for Breonna Taylor Act, banning no-knock warrants. So that's what upsets me. And actually, I do think, guys, that this speaks to a larger trend that we have to deal with on the left in, in these protest movements, which is... If you don't have specific, clear goals that you're fighting for, then at the end of the day, you're only blowing off steam and virtue signaling. Sorry, I know that sounds harsh, but it's true. Good intentions without a plan and goals is just virtue signaling. You go out there and you say how great you are and you repeat the slogans that make you feel good, and that's it. That gets nothing done. That's a waste of time. So what we need to reckon with on the left is... The lack of leadership in the movements and the lack of clear defined goals that everybody can rally around. And I honestly believe that the establishment knows that the left is so disorganized that they depend on us never being able to get our stuff together and never being able to come down with a plan and clear defined goals. And so I think that this speaks to that problem. Because if you're not, if you are unaware of where Rand Paul stands on this and you don't realize he's actually your ally on this issue then, you know, obviously I don't expect you to have a list of three or four detailed policies that you're like, this is what we're asking for, this is why we're out here. And so, you know, and also this stuff, keep it real, this stuff does turn off middle America, if you will. Which, some people might scoff at that and be like, who cares? But if you're in the business of trying to win and get your policies implemented, you have no choice but to garner the sympathies of people who otherwise you wouldn't really concern yourself with. So anyway, that's the situation. Rand Paul had to be escorted by cops to his hotel. The tactic itself, I don't think it crossed the line. I don't think it was, it was borderline, but it, it, I think it's on the safe side of that line. But the only downside of this one is they're just wrong about who Rand Paul is and what his priorities are and what side he's on when it comes to this. It's, he's unequivocally on the correct side on this issue.